you all know what that is we've all done that before we've done that an abundance of times before we do it in our daily teaching what i'm um, going to tell you about today is the tools that education city has to offer that can support you in these areas um, in terms of like gaps identification learning loss whether the gaps are over the summer slide or obviously that loss of learning through covid so what we're going to be looking at today are the assessments and the activities um, for enabling you to evaluate whereabouts your students are at. Um, you may know already, but all of our assessments and activities are marked for you, which means that they're available to view as part of this success tracker and um, in England as part of the data visualisation. You can use that for data analysis and for reporting purposes as well. And obviously using those tools alongside our new resources for that differentiated learning. So those of you that missed out at the beginning, my name's Hayley. If you've got any questions as we are going through, there is a Q, a Q sorry, can't get me words out. Can't, there is a Q and A button at the bottom of your screen or at the side, wherever your bar is. Um, you can click on that and type in a question as we're going through today's webinar. Um, you can also do it anonymously as well. So if you, if you don't want me to sort of know whose name it is, you can click on the anonymous button and that will do that for you. Alternatively, if you think of any questions towards the end of the webinar, I will provide you with my email address and you can send those over to me. Okay, so just before we get started, and as always, the account I'm going to be using is a made up English school. Please do not worry about any names that you see, whether staff or student, they are all made up. And as I mentioned, it is an English school. So there might be slight, difference, slight differences if you are joining me today from outside of England. Right, with all that done and sorted, let's head over to educationcity.com where we can get started. And here we are. Now, when you log into Education City, it may take you to the classic view that looks like this. Or you might want to work on the new view by clicking on the ribbon just there. Either way, it's got all of the resources in that Education City has to offer. It's just set out slightly differently. I'm going to be using the new view just here. I just find it a little bit easier to navigate. And obviously starting off with our assessments just here. Now, when you set an assessment, you can head into one of the folders just here um, and obviously find the assessment, set them that way. You can head into the subjects area, find the assessment that you're looking for and add it into a folder that way. I just find this way is really simple for you. So you can click on that. You can have a group or a class. You can select your group or your class just here. So I'm going to explore for year four just here, go straight down the middle. There we go. And you can see now that you've got all of these assessments that appear. Now, the great thing about, is about the Education City assessments, as well as being marked for you, um, you have access to every year group. This means as well, obviously, if you, children are starting in year four and you want to do a year three end of year assessment just to see what gaps there were, due to the COVID, you can do that if you wish to. You have access to all assessments in all year groups. And then obviously you've got your different assessments for your English, your maths and your science. Amongst those you will find there are formative assessments, as you can see just here for these reading comprehensions. There are summative assessments, just there, and there are end of year assessments as well. Now all assessments as I mentioned whether they are summative, formative, unit, end of year they are all marked for you but the formative assessments and the unit assessments that can be found in maths there we go and in science now these not only get marked for you but they also create a revision journal for each student that has taken the assessment. What that will do is it will fill up the revision journal with prescribed content and that's based on all of the questions that the child got in incorrect. So you don't have to do any of that, that is all done for you. 
There we go. So I'm going to go to science. There we are. Let's go for some plants just here. Click in the box just there, the one that you're after. And you can obviously preview um, the assessment by clicking on the magnifying glass there as well. There we are. Now, if I click next, we've got our publish date. This does enable you to publish um, for the future if you wish to. So if you've got those set term dates that you do your assessment weeks in, I know I used to have those, um, you can set this for ahead of time. So I can go for October. I can go for that last week in October if I wish to. There we are. Um, but I'm actually just going to set it for today. There we go. And it does tell you how long it's been published for just there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it for today and tomorrow. And you see there just for two days that's been published for. Literally following through each of those steps. So you've got your who, you've got your what, you've got your, uh, your dates just there, and then you've got your title. Now, I always find it's really easy to both pop in your year group there we go. And also the date that they did this assessment. Because if you plan on using the same assessment more than once, so that you can do sort of um, export that comparative data, you know when the assessments were completed. So I've got the title, what it is just there, the year group that I'm um, uh, issuing the assessment for, the date just there as well. And then as soon as I click on next, it's all done for me. All that's left to do is to click finish. Really, really easy way of setting an assessment for a class um, or a group of students as well. There we go. Now you can just click OK and that's done. I'm going to head into that folder of work. Here we go. And you can see I've got plants just here. Now, the great thing is at this point, if you've made like a bit of a bit of a mistake, maybe you pop the wrong, wrong one in, you can go to add content and you can find um, the tool that it is that you're looking for. And again, you've got all your filters just here. So I'm going to go for year three. I'm going to do a maths assessment instead. And I'm going to add in that maths assessment end of year. There we go. And then we can just click onto that um, assessment that I want to get rid of. And you can see just there, it says drop here to delete. Just um, take it up to the top, let go, and that has deleted it for you. And then obviously, if you want to edit what these say, we can do that as well. And we can even change the picture. I, lo I love that feature. There we go. Really useful again, if you are setting work for groups making sure we save as we go through. And obviously if they've done an assessment, we might give them a game to play as a bit of a reward. And remember all of the Education City games are educational as well. So, you know, they're not missing out. Here we go. And we can sort of filter down again. So I'm gonna go for maths. I obviously want some games. And you'll notice there are some brand new games. So in addition to our Play Live, which we know students love already, we now have our Whack-A-Mole games. You know, when you used to go to the arcade when you were little and there, was, there were those games where little heads would appear in the holes and you had to hit them on the head. That's what these are all about. So you have to splat the one that is the correct answer, but be careful if you go for an incorrect answer, you lose points. So it is all about the accuracy as well as the recall skill, um, exactly the same as the Play Live, all of those features. So let's pop in a couple of times table games in there. There we go. Click on done. And I'm just going to make sure that I sequence those in that order because I do not want them to do the assessment before they play on the games. There we go. Let's save that. Now, obviously, all of your students, your preferences, your tracking is all done for you because you've used that desktop assessment tile. But you can go through and you can edit for a group of students if you wish to. So if you've got a group of students working particularly um, in advance to their peers or below their peers, you can do that as well. And don't forget in the preferences, you can change the minimum pass rates, the countdown timer, the quit or the finish function on the assessment and the opportunity to go again. So please do explore those as you are setting that work. 
Now, obviously, the tracking function just here enables you to track instantly what they've done, whether they've completed it, and that instant score that they get. But we do have other features that enable you to track everything that they are doing. And that lies within our um, student scores just here. Now, you may have already noticed um, there is this tile just here. You may have used it already. But this is our um, assessment report. This is only available um, in England as it matches um, sort of the government guidelines for assessment reporting. So it is only available in England at the moment. It does meet all the criteria for the National Curriculum 2014. And what it enables you to do is to go into any assessment that has been completed, click to view the reports, and you have this colour coded system against the national curriculum objectives that have been uh, addressed during that assessment. Now you can see really simply, red means they got it incorrect, green they got it right, and where you're doing um, an assessment where they might have two or three questions for the same um, objective, it will appear amber. You can then click into that um, objective to look at the question and to look at individual results just there as well. Now we can already see that these two students were absent during the, the day of that test, so maybe that's something you need to do with those. But we can also filter names by first name first or last name as per the register, and we can export that data for reporting purposes. The great thing is as well, if I shrink down a couple of these um, unit areas, and have a look at just number, addition, and subtraction, we can have a look and see in this particular one, almost everybody got that question right, apart from Hannah. So Hannah needs a little bit of work in this area. But if we go to the one above, hardly anybody got that right. So we can then click into the question itself, have a look at those answers the students gave just here, did not attempt those students that didn't attempt it, the correct answer. And we can also click on that magnifying glass to open up the question itself. So you can open that up on the, um, the whiteboard, work through it all with your students. So really, really useful tool on um, the English subscription. However, we do also have our success tracker, which is available in every country we are international um, and again you can have a look for your class a group or an individual student and you can have a look for a term a half term an academic year a key stage whatever it is that you're looking to um, get data for there we go and you can see now all the assessments that and activities that have been marked for you for all of the students in my class. And again, we can filter um, by um, sort of surname first almost, first name first, whichever you want to do it in. Now, wherever there's an activity, we can click into that activity and it will show us um, the questions that that child got and the answers that they gave. And we can print them off a certificate as well, you know, if, you, if we're feeling generous that day maybe. Um, but the other thing we're able to do is access the assessments in the exact same way. So I can head into this assessment for this particular student. I can have a look at the questions that she got and the answers that she gave. She did quite well just there. And we can print them off a certificate again. Or we can enter that revision journal that the computer created for this particular student. And we can sort of see which areas this student needs to work on. So it's quite a handy tool. Obviously, our assessments have been updated since this one. That's why it's no longer available. Um, but you would be able to click on to add to my city if you want a student to repeat an assessment as well. Here we go. If I head back here, it will also show you, I don't think I've got any on here, here we go, if any um, assessments have been partially completed. So they've been bookmarked at a certain point, but they haven't yet been finished. There we go. So, uh, oh, sorry, bear with me. Um, so you, you're able to see which students maybe couldn't manage the whole thing in one sitting, um, or maybe struggled with it so much they put a bookmark in and they want to come and have a chat with you um, at some point. 
Now, as I mentioned, we can export this data um, to an Excel spreadsheet if we need to, but we can also edit the columns as well. So if we are looking maybe specifically for um, any assessments that we've been doing, we can take away some of the defaults and we can maybe look at questions attempted, duration, questions available, questions not attempted, and even the curriculum objective that was met by that question. And you can see here, you've got all of that data available to you. Now, obviously they all did the assessment in the same time because I completed this, this assessment for my uh, fake students. Um, but you, you can begin to understand sort of whereabouts students are coming from. And those students that are really, really struggling um, with a particular assessment, like this student here, um, that same student that got partially completed, he went for that whole 30 minutes, he only answered that many and he's got nine more to do. And obviously all of this data can be updated for a class, a group, or an individual. So individual, perfect for parents' evening. Absolutely brilliant for parents' evening. There we go. So this is, this is everything this particular child has been doing. Ooh, my apologies, there we go. So have a look at those functions. Obviously, really, really useful to start identifying the gaps in individual students' learning, as well as in your whole class and against your groups. Now, you may have heard me sort of say groups a number of times during this webinar. They are available to complete in our Manage Users area. And the great thing is that you can have as many groups in your class or across classes as you wish to. There isn't a limit. There's also not a limit as to how many groups a child can belong to as well. So you could have for different subject areas, for different units within those subject areas, however your imagination takes you. There we go. But if you are looking to um, do anything like that and you're not entirely sure, you can ask our help centre just here. We can head over here and we can type in groups and it will quite literally talk us through that whole process. There we go. So it's a really, really useful tool. Now, obviously, you, you will use Education City with your students in a different way to I might use it with my students, so somebody else might use it with theirs. But please do explore those areas and have a look at some of the new features we have um, in our subjects area, in our curriculum app, or in the search content area. We do have some brand new tools for activities, learn screens, um, as well as for phonics, multiplication tables, um, every other area you can think of really. Um, one more thing before um, I come to the end, I do want to show you our new look curriculum map. I'm very fond of this. We can head into the key stage and obviously our year group as we would do previously and pick our um, national curriculum objective. And then we have all of the tools completely color coded. I mean, I absolutely love color coded things. So I find this, oh, really really useful and you can see all of the activities are blue so they're really easy to identify and then you've got your think it's in red your learn screens in that kind of pinky color your topic tools in green also the great thing about this as well is that we are filtered via our online resources and our printables so if you do have any students that maybe during a local lockdown do not, um, doesn't have internet access or can't access Education City online, you can print them off um, some Education City printables, maybe turn it into a booklet for them as well so they aren't missing out. There we go. Don't forget we've also got our free printables at the bottom there, teacher resource pack, free printables going on, so do explore those as well. So that's just about all from me today. Um, I do hope that you found that useful. Um, but if you have got any questions for us, please do get in touch via our email address just here. Maybe if you want training, you can get in touch with us as well. We do one-to-one -one, um, tutorials, training sessions, and watch out for our CPD training sessions as well coming soon. All of our webinars, as always, can be found on our website for you to browse in your own time. And I do hope to see you at our next one. 
Until then, take care and stay safe. Bye-bye.